Exogeny is a shady corporation we first encounter on Pharos in Mass Effect 1. Their twisted biological experiments on the Thorian led to the near-complete enthrallment of the Zoo's Hope colonists. But Exogeny may have more sinister ties lying beneath the surface. In this video, we're going to explore a theory that Exogeny is actually a front business owned by Cerberus with the goal of funding and advancing the elusive man's organization. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's step into the world of Mass Effect. If that's the way it has to be, heck, come on, come on! Before we talk about Exogeny's connections, let's set up a framework. Cerberus is an incredibly well-funded organization, able to dump millions upon millions of credits into recreating the Normandy warship, reviving Commander Shepard, and a number of other less savory projects like Overlord. So where does Cerberus get all this money? They're not going to raise millions by collecting membership dues or fundraising dinners. They would need some serious business connections or ventures to generate the type of cash they need to fund their operations. In Mass Effect 2, after Joker unshackles Edie, we can learn about where Cerberus gets its money from. I have no solid data on material or fiscal resources. Spending trends indicate that Cerberus has a reliable income of several billion credits per year. Where are they getting that kind of income? Cerberus has several legitimate businesses as fronts to support operations. There also appear to be several wealthy private contributors in the Alliance Military Industrial Complex. Plus, the elusive man invented the paperclip. He's still getting royalties. That is a joke, Shepard. So we know that Cerberus uses legitimate businesses to generate funds for their own operation. Is it possible that Exogeny is one of these businesses? Given how much funding Cerberus has, it's likely that we would encounter one of these companies in the trilogy, since they would have to own some pretty big companies. So what evidence do we have that Cerberus might have a stake in Exogeny? Well, for starters, we know that Exogeny had dealings with Cerberus in Mass Effect 1. While exploring the Exogeny HQ on Pharos, Commander Shepard can discover a terminal containing information about a deal made between the two entities. I don't trust this Cerberus group. They may pay us well, but if this gets out before we've developed an antidote, it's just not smart. They won't tell us what they want samples for, or why they want them delivered to the Matano system. My records show nothing of interest out there. Exogeny made a deal with Cerberus to send Reaper technology, specifically Dragon's Teeth, to a secret research facility on the planet Chaska. The results were not so good for anyone involved, as you may guess considering the name of the quest is called UNC Colony of the Dead. How exactly Exogeny got its hands on Reaper technology is unclear. It's possible they discovered it on the planet Trebin, where we can find an Exogeny survey team that all turned into husks during another quest. In this case, it was Exogeny who was experimenting with dragon's teeth. We do know how much Cerberus and the elusive man love experimenting with this technology, so the deal with Exogeny was a match made in heaven, unless you were one of the colonists on Chaska. They were all turned into husks who Commander Shepard ended up killing. Another interesting point of comparison is the Reaper IFF mission in Mass Effect 2. In this mission, Commander Shepard infiltrates a ship that was previously inhabited with a Cerberus research team that was working with Reaper technology. But of course, after interacting with the Dragon's Teeth, all of the crew were turned into husks, which Commander Shepard ended up killing. But I digress. Let's get back to the point at hand. Why would Exogeny make a deal with Cerberus? The simplest explanation is money. Dr. Gamoral's note mentioned that Cerberus paid well for samples of Reaper technology. This begs the question, why would Cerberus pay Exogeny if the latter were a front business for the elusive man? If Exogeny were generating funds to help advance Cerberus goals, why would Cerberus be funneling money the other way? This could be an example of money laundering known as round tripping. This is where criminal organizations, such as Cerberus, funnel funds through a legitimate business, such as Exogeny, before sending them back to themselves, thus cleaning the money and making it harder for criminal investigators to track and scrutinize. So in this case, if we accept that Exogeny is a front for Elon Husk, Cerberus was essentially paying itself by sending money to Exogeny in exchange for Reaper Tech. Now I will admit, this quest alone doesn't definitively prove that Exogeny makes money for Cerberus. 
there isn't a clear smoking gun that we can find in the trilogy that directly ties any specific business to Cerberus, but if the elusive man is generating millions of credits via legitimate companies, it's not hard to imagine that Exogeny would be one of them, given the deal we see between the two organizations. The similarities between Exogeny and Cerberus run deeper than what initially meets the eye. Let's consider for a moment the core business model of Exogeny. Exogeny Corporation is at the forefront of human expansion in the new galactic economy, funding colonial development and securing resource rights to ensure our progress as a species. It is a corporation that specializes in human colonial development and planetary exploration. They specifically fund and set up human colonies throughout the Milky Way with the goal of uncovering alien technology. Sound familiar? The goals and experiments of Exogeny and Cerberus seem incredibly aligned. Establishing colonies to advance humanity's interest in the Milky Way? Check. Performing shady research experiments? Check. Messing around with Reaper technology? Check. Exogeny was not the only business which had dealings with Cerberus in Mass Effect 1. Binary Helix, the company that experimented with the Rachni on Novaria, also cut a deal with the Elusive Man's organization. In this case, the corporation shipped a bunch of Rachni offspring off of Novaria, leading to a bunch of problems throughout the Milky Way. Let's quickly recap them. After a long investigation with our homeboy Admiral Kohoku, we discover a facility full of Cerberus commandos, Rachni soldiers, and our dead homie Kohoku on Binthu. The main facility where Cerberus experimented with the Rachni was Sigma Depot 23, a remote research station. Unfortunately for the Cerberus crew, the Rachni got loose and killed all of them before escaping into the Styx Theta cluster. Hey Commander, this is Cerberus. We were studying some Rachni, and they got loose and killed all our guys. Can you take care of that? The Rachni ended up attacking an Alliance outpost under the command of Lieutenant Durand, and Commander Shepard had to help take out all the Rachni soldiers. The only place Cerberus could have obtained Rachni samples is from Binary Helix on Novaria. They were the only people who had access to Rachni offspring, considering the Rachni had been completely extinct for roughly a thousand years until Binary Helix discovered and hatched the egg of a Rachni queen. As for the funding of Binary Helix, we know that both Saren and Benezia had a major financial stake in the company, according to a conversation we have with that asshole Analeas. It's interesting to note that Saren and the Elusive Man knew each other during the First Contact War. Their intertwining stories are explored in depth in the Mass Effect comics, but it's likely that by Mass Effect 1, the two men had conflicting goals and motives. The Elusive Man sought to gain an edge for humanity by any means necessary, whereas Saren sought to ally with the Reapers to potentially save organic life by becoming slaves to the machines. The goal of Binary Helix was to create bioweapons for Saren, this doesn't exactly sound like something the elusive man would readily co-sign. Exogeny, on the other hand, seems much more aligned with the goals of Cerberus. We'll likely never know for sure the entire scope of Cerberus' money laundering and financial dealings. It's clear they were able to secure significant funding and investment to pull off massive projects, most of which generated no money for them and ended up getting a lot of their staff killed. Project Overlord, The Lazarus Project, Experiments with the Rachni, Thorian Creepers, and Dragon's Teeth. The Elusive Man wasn't bankrolling all of this out of his own pocket. And if I had to put money on it, I would bet that Exogeny was part of Cerberus' portfolio, helping to generate the funds they needed to expand their operations and advance the goal of humanity. So there you have it. Why I believe Exogeny was owned by Cerberus in the Mass Effect trilogy. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.